Hey everyone, this is Nick from Us vs. Herd. Uh, we're going to go over the Snap IPO and just the current market conditions and kind of what I think about Snapchat, the app, um, their market share and, and, and what they're doing with their overall technology and kind of where they're heading. Um, I mean, I, I know most of everyone has heard of Snapchat and you know, they've been around for a long time, but on uh, March 3rd, 2017, uh, they went public for the first time. Shares were being offered at uh, $17 for institutional investors. Um, and it actually opened around $23, $24 range. Uh, so it was quite a bit, there's quite a big jump from the offering price of $17. And as you can see, uh, the very first couple days, it went all the way, spiked all the way up to 29. It's just been kind of struggling since then. And like any other big IPO like Twitter or Facebook, there's a lot of retail buying, wanting to get in on the next hot stocks and think they're going to make millions overnight. And in reality, they just get stuck holding the bag. Um, so what, we want, what I want to talk about is my thoughts on what Snapchat is doing, where it's headed, and kind of compare their strategy to what Facebook and Twitter and other social networks are doing. Um, a lot of you probably don't know this, but a couple of years ago, Facebook offered to buy Snapchat for a few billion dollars and they declined. And obviously that looks like a, the, the right call right now for the CEO since he's worth $25 billion or, or something like that. But he's the youngest billionaire CEO on the planet right now. Um, so just want to go over this. The Snapchat um, is kind of comparable. We'll go back to um, let's go to let's go to face. Let's go to Twitter here. Take a look at what, take a look at what Twitter did back in the day. Um, as you can see, their stock's been on a lower price and it's been taking quite a big beating. Um, but if we go back and look at Twitter's price action here and I want to kind of compare Twitter to, I'm um, sorry, Snapchat to Twitter. And as you can see, Twitter hit an all-time high of $74.73 and has not seen that even close since. Um, over the last year, let's see, since actually 2014, they've just been taking huge drops and just been on a huge decline. Um, they've had some major gap ups, but nothing too notable for the long term. Um, so yeah, they were at you know from seventy four dollars, and now they're trading at fourteen dollars, and they're you know they're they're struggling. Um, you know, Facebook is a behemoth, but even during you know Facebook struggled back in the day as well. So if you take a look at Facebook, oh, this is just their five year chart. You know, they've gone all the way down to seventeen dollars, and now they're trading at one hundred and forty two. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pumping up the market when an IPO happens and, and stocks like Facebook don't come to market every day and a lot of people buy in and obviously if you bought down in the, for this story for Facebook, um, if you bought down in, even in the 30s or 40s when it was high up here and now it's at 142, you, you know, you'd be fine if you're still holding but if you go, you know, if you, like, unlike Twitter when it was in the 70s, it went down to 14, kind of a different story. So. Um, this is what, a what it looks like when a company is exceeding expectations and is profitable. Um, Twitter and Snapchat are not profitable. And as you can see from Twitter's chart, we'll just go back to it. It's a different story over a five-year period. on Twitter <clears throat> it looks like it does not want to load the data I lost my connection here for a second just saw that this disconnected up here, but now we're back to real time. Oh, 
Okay, and we're back. Um, looks like there was some lag in the connection or something like that. Um, so if you're looking at Snapchat, you know, right now we don't have a whole lot of data. We have it's been it's been on the market for less than a month, and you know, reached almost twenty nine dollars. Then it went straight, basically straight down. People started selling, and then you know, a week after it opened, options were allowed, and I, I believe you could short the stock then. Um, so then when people started buying options and allowing to short the stock, obviously it went low and it hit a low of 18.90. And then it then had a very solid, uh, pretty solid bounce here the last few days. And actually um, a lot of the banks that were selling were, were offering the, uh, the stock have also offered a, um, a buy rating on the stock after they, they sold all their, their, positions and we're selling it. Um, so we can go, looks like I gotta increase the memory on think your swim. Um, so if we take a look at Snapchat, it is more skewed towards the buy and it, and when this when this stock debuted um, <coughs> excuse me when this when the stock debuted, I mean, it was all over CNBC. They're all talking it up, saying this is the best stock. And then as soon as it started selling off, everyone turned their backs on it, where it's like, you know, sell, strong sell. We should sell the stock. Don't own it. If it's in your portfolio, wait. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how the news media, um, you know, thinks it's the next hottest thing. And then as soon as it starts dipping down, you know, 8%, they start, you know, treating it like garbage. Um, so... You know, don't really trust the media. Just do your own due diligence, and and you should be okay. Whether whether you believe the stock is a buy or not, if you believe in if you believe in Snapchat, then you know that's okay. If you have a good reason, don't buy it, hold it, then that's up to you. Um, but like I said, I don't see a, a huge value here in terms of upside. I mean, I do. Everyone does like an underdog. I love underdogs. I mean, I knew that Facebook would over time grow. Um, but the one thing the difference about uh, Facebook is they have a lot of different properties. They have desktop, they have mobile, they have Instagram. Now they have Messenger that they're incorporating more features and trying to monetize that. Um, they have WhatsApp. They have um, you know their VR and Twitter. Um, over the last five years, they haven't really innovated anything. They just did the same thing, and you could say that, like, you know, Jack Dorsey is kind of like a part-time CEO. A lot of people are calling him that say, hey, you, you got to pick Square or you got to pick Twitter. Um, and maybe his focus is not entirely on, on Twitter. I mean, that's true. Um, as you can see by their stock, it hasn't done them any good over the last five years, whatever they're doing. Um, but I just don't think they're innovating enough. And Snapchat, I mean, you could kind of say it's like a, a one-trick pony in terms of Twitter. It's kind of like Twitter since Twitter you can just post on the feed. And now they're starting to have, you know, live and trying to switch it up with moments and everything like that. But Snapchat caters to the younger generation. Um, but they just have the, their phone property and they just have the, the one way to make revenue. Um, they do have like a magazine style on their app, but there's no, um, they haven't been able to figure out how to monetize it properly. Um, so I do hope that Snapchat does prove profitable in the, in the, in the long term, um, but I do, currently do not see, you know, $22, $21.99 right now. Um, I just don't see a whole lot of value there. Um, so going into kind of the market and what's happening is yesterday was a pretty big down day for Snapchat, probably one of their biggest in, in a while. And that was due to um, Facebook launches stories on, um, on Facebook. So as you know, there was... Facebook's been trying to steal market share or slow the growth of of Snapchat, or basically stall them out so they can't they can't continue to grow. Um, back and this is back in August. Um, 
Facebook launched Instagram stories to copycat Snapchat, slow them down. Then they launched the Messenger, and now we are um, now they're getting more aggressive and actually putting it in Facebook itself. And I've actually since it's, since it's been on the last twenty four hours, actually a lot of people are are using it. Um, if you take a look here, after it says here after Snapchat, after Instagram stories, Snapchat growth slowed eighty two percent. And as you can see here, quarter after quarter, they're making, but it's kind of starting to level off here. Um, and you know, you could say that more millennials are using Snapchat. Um, they're also a lot more tech savvy, so they're more willing to skip ads. Um, so in the near future, I would say at least the next year or two, I would say it's going to take Snapchat some innovating to really to really start to beat Facebook at its own game. I mean, Facebook, you know, Facebook and Twitter went at it. And they started incorporating features like the follow me button when Twitter was really taken off in the beginning. And now they've really slowed the growth on Twitter where their, you know, their stock got hammered down to $14 now and Facebook continued to grow. So Facebook has just become a behemoth. And if Snapchat can't figure out a way to innovate, it's going to die. Um, I mean, $20, I mean, I don't even know since they don't make any money I mean, maybe at ten dollars this would be a good offer, um, but it looks like the market's still trying to find a value for it. Um, it's probably going to stay in this range below twenty-five and above fifteen or above eighteen even um, for the foreseeable future, unless there's a significant catalyst. Um, Snapchat does need to have some some news on things that they're doing, rather than just letting. Facebook eat its lunch.